of the evening are actually two speakers, Robert and Wang from uh, TinyBot, a uh, Rotterdam-based company that make tiny robots for elderly with dementia. And as I understand well, Robert and Wang, Wang met each other at VU University where they were researching um, a useful way to implement robots, but also a valuable way. So how do people actually experience having a, hope, a robot at their home? Um, yeah. And tonight they uh, brought Tessa along with them, which you see here, and they will tell all about it. You want both a mic or? Thank you. All right, so hi, uh, my name is Robert. I'm here uh, with Wang and uh, also with Tessa. So I'll have Tessa introduce herself. It'll be in Dutch, but hopefully it works. Hello, allemaal. What leuk om hier te zijn vanavond. Mijn naam is Tessa. So that, uh, that was uh, Tessa, so she said, uh, uh, nice to be here in this evening. My name is Tessa for all the, the English speakers here. Um, and we started uh, TinyBots, I think, uh, three years ago together um, um, with the mission to also um, help people with dementia. Um, so what, what we've developed is Tessa, and Tessa is a small social robot for people with dementia um, and their families. So what, what you see in dementia is that these people often can do a lot of things still, or so they're still able to, and they often want to do a lot of things, but then because of their situation, it becomes very difficult. They become a little bit isolated, they become forgetful, and it's very hard to I initiate sometimes these kind of things um, because of their situation. So what Tessa does is she gives, li like she just gave uh, 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 before, um, spoken suggestions to uh, help people prepare for what is coming, but also get ideas or, or suggestions of what to do. Uh, so Tessa gives structure and routine, uh, but also helps people to activate them uh, again from. Uh, um, so how does this work? So I'll give a very uh, a, a brief summary. So it's the family that actually controls the messages of Tessa. So they can write personal messages, make it very um, personal in their own words, set times, and to give some examples. Um, for example, they could uh, give a reminder for it's 10 o'clock, uh, did you check the mailbox? Because there's already a new newspaper. Um, and this helps them not only to get an idea of what to do, but also provides them a suggestion of how to do it. Um, and that helps them to, to also stay physically active. Um, but it really depends on the situation of the person. So, uh, so everybody has different needs, so everybody will also have different tessas in a sense. Um, and um, that, that's some of the lessons we want to share here today. So we only have 10 minutes, so there's many lessons. But I think um, for us, what is, I think, most interesting to share are those specifically to designing robots, which I think come with a few interesting aspects. Yeah, thank you, Robert. Um, just to give you a sense of our design process, we have a user-centered design process like you're all familiar with. We have been testing, I think, in the past three years with about nearly 600 people. So for different phases, we use different methods to test, but I will, we won't go into that. Um, what's interesting um, to share is just the insight of um, when we were starting designing a social robot, we had to change some of our emphasis, some scope of how what, what became more important. And the second part is the, uh, and Robert will elaborate on that, is the design process of picking which part is essential and which part we should definitely left out. Okay, so first with social robot in comparison, oh, okay, in comparison with uh, just an app, is that it's not just about designing a feature, but it is also about designing a character. Um, so you cannot use all the same method as designing an app and apply it on a robot because uh, an app on a general platform such as your smartphone, when you open an app, there's a new environment, so you have new rules of the interaction and you understand it because you opened a new app. For a robot, you're interacting actually with the same interface. So if um, everybody would design different kind of feature without being curated, 
then it appears like a s uh, robot with uh, schizophrenia. Um, so uh, that's very important. So when we talk about character, it's not just about appearance. It's also about the story. Although the appearance just gives some cues on what the character could, um, could be. And also this uh, voice, we have actually tested four voices. We written four uh, conversations. Um, and uh, people do perceive one robot differently than another, although some appear the same, or we also change some of the appearances. Um, okay, so let's dive a bit more into the character. Um, so when people uh, interact with a robot, the main functionality is just a talk agenda, if you put it just, you know, um, uh, flatly as a technical uh, functionality. But for many of our uh, users, and I think currently there are about 80 families using them, and some almost more than a year. Um, for them, Tessa is a bit more than just a talk agenda. For them, it's a buddy, companion. Uh, I think the first speaker also talked about that. Um, that's because the things that Tessa says, although it's programmed by the family, um, the message that's being told is being influenced by who's, who said it, right? And because they attach the agency to Tessa, the character that we have designed influence how the message is being perceived. So um, that's why the character is so important to create a social role that's not threatening, it's friendly, but you do attach value to it like it's realistic. It, the, the things that Tessa says does have uh, meaning. That, uh, there is some truth in it. It's not just made up. So that was, a, um, I think, a big journey. And we have tested in 2017 with 100 real life patients. Um, and meanwhile, while actually building it, building the interface, but also building all these uh, interactions into it, uh, we did interaction in real life. Um, of course, help desk was a uh, pain in the ass. Busy. Uh, <laughs> okay, but um, again, so when we talk about the social role, it's not just something that, that happened. Uh, I'll give you two guidelines for it. So one of the thing is um, you shouldn't um, so you should write some background, you should color, you should create a persona for it. But be careful not to be too specific because um, that gives you the risk that uh, you might uh, go into a direction that's not fitting anymore for the person. So there's a uh, very um, uh, nuanced balance there. And maybe I could give you an uh, 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 approach for it. So. Um, in cartoons and in uh, manga or anime, uh, the main character is actually very well crafted. Although um, it gives you a some backstory, but many people do recognize themselves and they can relate to the experiences. Um, so the character doesn't have really extreme um, characteristics, uh, and that that's also something that we did with uh, Tessa. Um, uh, and all the side characters, they have way more outspoken char uh, characteristics. And by leaving this little space there, we give the opportunity for the user to fill in the gap. So, and in this case, it's not just one user, but the whole family is filling up that gap. And I think that's, uh, that's also something that makes Tessa more relatable. Yep. Okay. And the robot continues on the design process. Yeah, so I have uh, three minutes, so I will, I will keep it brief, but I think we have a break after, so you can ask all questions. So let's, let's talk about RUM. So all good design processes, need a good acronym. Um, so ours is RUM, but then, of course, with acronyms, you always need to cheat a little bit to make it work, uh, like a good name. So the or, the or, ours is uh, the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, so, so I think th uh, these are, I think, very common terms you see in many design processes, but I think we, we give them a very specific um, um, meaning to them in relation to Tessa and how we design uh, 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 new functionality, change existing functionality, or plan next steps, not just for Tessa, but also for all the stuff around Tessa. Um, and it, it's in three parts, and they're, this way they're, they're flipped around, because for us, the meaningful part is the most uh, important thing. Second, to, then it, sh it should be usable, and, and the third one is reliable. It should also be a reliable system. So I'll give so, some brief explanations here, but it, I mean, there's a hierarchy, but they're all important. 
Um, well, you always start with meaning. So what need are we solving here? We should ask for what are we changing? What are we, what, what situation are we addressing? And what user are, are we, uh, so what is their situation? What is their need and, and why are we doing this? And, and that should be always first on the agenda on changing something because they got attached to existing functionality and there should be a good reason to change it. Um, but we always need to be aware what we're doing and why we're doing it. Um, and, and this always needs to be very sharp at the, uh, 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 the start of every change that we do. Um, the second is usable and I think y usable is always like it should be uh, be able to be used, but for, for our situation, it often means leaving out certain set of uh, functionalities to make it more understandable, um, to give a, a very brief example within within the time. So there's not only the, the, uh, the end user, so the people with dementia, but also the families. Um, and m sometimes these needs are conflicting, so, um, but they're also healthcare professionals. And in some situations that, um, when the healthcare professionals get access to the agenda, um, the individual doesn't like it the, because he, he starts to mistrust it because he manages his own his, his or her own agenda. And that way, so, so it's a very, sometimes you need to be very aware of who gets access to something or not and then leave that out into the uh, 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 functionality. So I'll, I'll finish the story very quickly. And the second part of this is, uh, it's not just about TESA, but it's also what we see is TESA is a blank agenda. And then families sometimes have it very difficult to come up with good messages to say. So we need to have an additional uh, 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 functionality or a process there to make it usable. And that's why you made these inspiration cards to, to get an uh, to, to help people get in new inspirations for what they can do with the agenda instead of getting a uh, kind of frightening blank agenda. And then the final bit, and I think this is where it, it kind of transitions from like conceptual ideas and we're talking about a more higher level, is actually executing it. So it should also work in a way and that's also what we, uh, as Wang said, we tested with many families. Then in the field you come across many different situations then then uh, especially at, at this scale. Eh? So there's always prototyping, you do a one-off and it kind of works, people are happy. But then the stuff you come across when you upscale are very different. And then people start to depend on it. And, and um, it starts to make a meaningful contribution to their life. And then when it doesn't work, the impact's very big. So all the changes that we do and the new things we suggest, we always need to be aware of that it's not just some concept or some project. This is already making impacts in the, in the life of people. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs>